Good morning, everyone. So for this video, I decided that I was going to talk about Tolkien and how he viewed modernity, that is to say the modern world. In his time, obviously things are different from they were in the uh, 20th century. Um, and we, ha we have progressed. Um, so what would he think about today's world? Because he disliked the modern world of his day. So I wonder what he would think of today. And you can kind of, from his letters and from his writings, you can kind of see probably how he might view today. Because if he hated the world he lived in, the modern world as it was when he was alive, how much more so now? He once, when he was uh, given a tape recorder, he had to say a prayer into it to exercise any demons that might be in there. That's kind of how he viewed technology. Tolkien was like his hobbits. He hated machines. He loved good peace and, and quiet and like he was he loved the natural world, especially trees. Um Machines, in his view, actualize power. We create these machines that save us on like labor and stuff like that. And he felt that that just created endless, worse labor. And ultimately causes war. I mean, look at how we do war today with you know drones and all this like modern technology and stuff that we got um, of course they didn't have that back then but they did have jets and tanks and um, bombs of course you have the A-bomb which he hated that we we dropped that on, on Japan um, he even hated how we were destroying Germany even though they kind of deserved it obviously um but you don't kill innocent men, women, and children just because they live in a country or a place where there's evil people committing atrocious crimes. He would often refer to uh, World War One and World War Two as the War of the Machines. And when I first read about that, it made me think of the Terminator movies. <laughs> and, I mean... It's not a war between two factions, you know, having using machines or whatever. I mean, kind of. I mean, John Connor takes the Terminator and uh, one of the Terminators and, and changes it, makes it good, send it back in time to protect his younger self. But um, anyway, I wanted to read from one of Tolkien's letters. This is a letter ninety six that he wrote to his son Christopher who was serving in uh, South Africa in the uh, Royal Air Force and um, uh, he says as far as we can go back the nobler part of the human mind is filled with the thoughts of Sib peace and goodwill and with the thought of its loss we shall never recover it for that is not the way of repentance which works spirally and not in a closed circuit, we may, may recover something like it, but on a higher plane. Just as, to compare a small thing, the converted urban gets more out of the country than the mere yokel, but he cannot become a real landsman. He is both more and in a way less, less truly earthly anyway. Of course, I suppose that subject to the permission of God, the whole human race, as each individual, is free not to rise again, but to go to perdition and carry out the fall to its bitter bottom, as each individual can singulariter. And at certain periods, the present is nobly one that seems not only a likely event, but imminent. Still, I think there will be a millennium, the prophesied thousand-year rule of the saints, that is, those who have, for all their imperfections, never finally bowed heart and will to the world or the evil spirit, in modern, but not universal terms, mechanism, scientific materialism, socialism, in either of its factions, now at war. 
Now, that makes me think of maybe, is he saying the United States is also a socialist? Well, in a way, we kind of are. Um, so they're using machines. Uh, he even said um, that, you know, machines are basically related to magic. And, you know, we, we can use machines for, for good things, obviously, but they can also be used for bad. And oftentimes, that's what happens. Because we are fallen, that's just our nature, that's what's going to happen. Everything we make is going to be imperfect. And unfortunately, with the machines that we use, yeah, we can do good, but we're also going to cause so much bad, it's going to destroy life, it's going to destroy nature. And that's all the... And so, yeah. So modernity, you know, machines, it all goes together, right? Um, Mordor, for example, in Lord of the Rings, is one giant factory. And Saruman with Isengard tries to make it a tiny Mordor. And of course, you know, he takes over the Shire and destroys a lot of that through his magic or machines that he loves so well. Like I said, even though they may can be convenient, they often lead to bad things. I mean, in the wrong hands, anything can be used for evil, obviously. Um, and so, from reading Tolkien, I myself have kind of begun to hate today's world and machines, even though I do use, I mean, I'm on a computer right now. Um, but I want to try to use this for good. This is a magical device that I want to use to do good. But of course, the evil wizards of the world use it to do so much evil. Um, I, in my town, have noticed it's, it's... This used to be like a small town that I live in, and it's kind of grown over the years. Um, so it's not the, the town that I recognize when I was coming here when I was a kid because my uh, grandparents lived here. My dad grew up here. It was even smaller then. This was back in the 70s. But I'm constantly seeing just nature being torn down so we can build all these new buildings like homes and businesses and all of this stuff. And if machines are going to end up doing all these jobs for us eventually anyway, why do you need five car washes in like the same little area? Because there is, there is a, a few car washes in this little area, and I, it's like, do you need that many? You're destroying all this land for that. Um, so Tolkien was right. And I do think he would hate today's world because of that. And, I mean, he, you know, saw that happen to his hometown that he grew up in. It was not, it was outside of Birmingham, and now it's a suburb of Birmingham because the city kind of grew, and the city I'm living in is doing the same thing. It's growing. And of course, what do we use when we're tearing everything down and building this new stuff up? Machines. So, yeah. And you got all these people killing each other over stupid stuff, too. Religion, land. Well, we want to be part of this country, but uh, that country, but the country we're in now doesn't want to let us go. So this is the country we want to be in is invading, and everyone hates this country now. Or, oh, well, this is our actual home. We belong here. These people don't, so we're just going to go in and take it and just kill them all. Yeah, I think he would not like that. I know, like I said, I don't like it. And I don't know too many other people who do. So is all of this worth it? That's that's a good question. But anyway, <clears throat> that's just what I think. Um, I know there's probably more I could say on this subject, and there's more in, in Tolkien's works, um, but this is just what I had time to uh, put together. So there you have it, Tolkien and modernity. So that's it. Later.